welcome to Grumblings of a Gaming Grignard. I'm Tom. I enjoy playing role-playing games or RPGs with friends, and sometimes I get together with folks I've never met before. In a recent first gathering of folks for a new campaign in a Session Zero, a gamer was on his cell phone, obviously playing a video game for what seemed like a long time to me. However, it was a Session Zero, and we were somewhat independently creating characters based on the Dungeon Master's guidance. So I thought to myself, he's just occupying his downtime. Unbeknownst to me at that time, another player at the same table found the phone gamer's behavior incredibly offensive. Fast forward, characters have been created, and the DM asks the group, what do you want to get out of the game? Our phone gamer puts down his phone and quickly responds, well, fun, of course. Isn't that what everyone wants? Yeah. I thought, again, unbeknownst to me, the player who was previously offended really took offense with the phone gamer's response. He later said that he felt the phone gamer came across as, quote, entitled, unquote, and, quote, showed a lack of respect for other people, unquote. I don't think I thought that at the time, and honestly, I still don't know. However, that scenario got me thinking. Do gamers need an implied or specified social contract? Do we need an implicit agreement among all of the gamers to cooperate for each other's benefit, for each other's fun? Now, I'm not necessarily talking about the player characters cooperating. They don't have to. But the players themselves. I think... The answer is yes. Now, before you throw darts at me, I also think that under some circumstances, it might already be in place. What do I mean? Sometimes a social contract is implied, such as when friends who have known one another for a long time gather to play a game. Under those circumstances, perhaps the contract already exists. Social norms have probably been established. Rules of behavior are clear, or they should be clearer. As such, a specific contract does not need to be spelled out, or written out for that matter, and it might even be wickedly awkward to do so. However, when complete strangers gather, such as via a meetup group or via a looking for group forum, there is an argument to be made for some rules, and I don't just mean rules of the game, but rules of decorum or a specified social contract. Now, I also know there are those who would consider a social contract a hard no. When discussed on a forum, one poster said, quote, the only social contract that is required is don't be a jerk, unquote. Another game master tells their players, quote, just don't be dicks. Unquote. Lastly, another said, quote, if we need a social contract, I'm out. Unquote. However, I don't know. If you've read the forum RPG Horror Stories, you'll note that merely asking strangers to not be jerks may not be enough. With that, I think most people, by and large, want to be welcomed and liked by a group. If that means conforming, I think many would welcome knowing what is appropriate in that group. In addition, if you've played in games with strangers, perhaps during COVID, then you may have encountered some who, while not being dicks or jerks, they don't necessarily subscribe to the same social norms that you do. Under such circumstances, I believe, provided no one is being awkwardly asked to sign it, a social contract might be appropriate. Okay, so what might that look like? For the latter scenario, one in which strangers are gathered together to game, folks who've never met one another before, the following are rules that I believe are appropriate. First, some rules for everyone. Show up on time or communicate with your group. Others have scheduled their lives to run or attend a gaming session. 
and, as a courtesy, everyone should be respectful of each other's time. Plan to stay until a session is over, or again, communicate with your group. It may seem bizarre that I have to mention the following, but here it goes. Embrace what I would call common social etiquette. If you find maintaining personal hygiene offensive, or if you refuse to brush your teeth, or if you can't chew with your mouth closed, or if you won't control flatulence, or if you hate women, or if you hate men, or if you hate anyone based on some inherent attribute, or if you can't keep your political opinions to yourself, or if you have a burning desire to make everyone else present at a table uncomfortable, etc., etc., in my humble opinion, you should probably avoid joining an in-person gaming group with strangers. <laughs> Lastly, embrace diversity. People and their perspectives. Treat everyone with respect and dignity. Now some rules specifically for dungeon masters or DMs. Accept that you are by default a leader and with that role comes responsibility. The players are going to turn to you for guidance, for leadership. It shouldn't be a heavy burden, but you need to accept it nonetheless. Endeavor to learn the rules, but know that the first two rules a DM needs to embrace are probably and arguably be consistent with rulings and embrace what's called the rule of cool. More on the latter at another time. Be ready to run your session. As I said, you are a leader, and it is your session. If you're not ready, it's unlikely to turn out well. Sure, there are a few talented DMs out there who can just wing it, and they can pull it off with finesse, but they're a rare breed. Review rules, particularly those rules you think might come up during a session. Know your adventure. If you're familiar with the plot and the pace of it, it should run smoother. In addition, knowing your adventure allows you to deal with unexpected player actions, and players will always surprise you. Being ready also means being organized. Have your materials and notes set up before a session. Use stickies or bookmarks so you can easily find a book or adventure section you know or you suspect you might need. If you use them, gather your miniatures ahead of time. During a session, let the players play. Let them make their own decisions. Don't railroad the players or force them down a specific path. And don't punish players for being clever. Also, don't intentionally or maliciously try to kill them. End on time. Try as I might, I often fail to do this. If you watch any of our streams, you, you may note that I often look to, off to the side in the last hour or so. That's because I'm looking at a clock on the wall. I'm trying to gauge where to end the session. That said, really try to do so. Try to end on time. It's a way of showing respect for others' time. When closing a session to improve your future sessions, consider asking your players, what was your highlight? This is also a way of letting them know that you care about their fun. And it's a way to gather feedback as to what went well from the player's perspective. Lastly, thank your players for attending a session. Let them know that you appreciate their doing so. Players have rules too. Appreciate that your DM is probably spending hours so that you may have fun. As such, except that it is the DM's show. It is the character's story, but it is the DM's show. Throughout any session, keep in mind that the story you are collectively weaving is not just about your character. Don't be a game hog. Let other players have their moment in the spotlight. Toward that end, know when to talk, but also when to shut up and listen. It's easy to talk. It's exponentially harder to actively listen. Don't interrupt or talk over other players. In that vein, Avoid side conversations. If something is worth stating or asking, consider sharing it or asking it of the group at an appropriate time. 
during combat itself to keep the game flowing. Know what you're going to do on your turn. Look stuff up and how stuff works beforehand. The following might be controversial. However, as RPGs are role-playing games and not rule-playing games, accept the DM's authority over the game. In the case of Dungeons and Dragons, the DM's guide is just that, a guide. The DM is the final arbiter of the all rules. Sure, the rules provide a framework, and DMs should be humble when appropriate and endeavor to apply the rules with consistency. When a DM does rule, if you as a player disagree, state your case, but resist the urge to say, the rules don't say that. Don't argue. No rules lawyering. If necessary, bite your lip. Let the DM rule. Move on and civilly discuss it in private with the DM after the game. If at the table the DM asks for an interpretation, well, then that's a different story. If you have any doubt as to how a DM might rule on something, ask in advance, preferably days plus in advance, so that that DM might have time to research potentially complex issues. Moving on, don't metagame. Metagaming is a player's use of real-life knowledge in-game to determine their character's actions when the same character has no relevant knowledge or awareness under those circumstances. This can refer to in-game plot information, such as secrets or events occurring away from the character, as well as facets of game mechanics, such as abstract statistics or the precise limits of abilities. More on metagaming at another time. Bottom line, don't do it. This is the last don't, I promise. Don't cheat with your dice rolls, even to save your character's life. Let the dice fall where they may. When a gaming session is over, end on a positive note. Smile, thank your fellow players, and thank your DM. Shake hands. A handshake is a sign of good sportsmanship. Its purpose is to convey trust, respect, and equality. So if necessary, dry a sweaty hand on your pant leg, and then appropriately shake the hands of your fellow players and your DM. As in the scenario I started with, invariably, some personalities are just going to clash. That's a reality. Recognizing that, be approachable and positively responsive to individuals who wish to constructively address differences. Be receptive to olive branches from them. Very much related, if you have an issue with someone, muster the intestinal fortitude to try to respectively address your differences with the goal of mutually resolving them. Talk to one another, as adults should. Ultimately, everyone wants to have fun. The players and the DM, everyone. So this last part might be a bitter pill for some. Except that while there might be a group for everyone, not everyone is right for every group. Folks are not always going to get along. Sometimes we just have to accept that we're not a right fit for a particular group and move on. Occasionally, DMs have to break that news to a player. If you are ever on the receiving end, accept it and move on. Then find a group in which you might be a better fit. I know I covered a lot. Nonetheless, I hope you found this video on RPG social contracts useful. Thank you for watching Grumblings of a Gaming Grignard. Roll a seven-sided die and have a good night.